We are bringing every single day the power of the plants to the people. I don't want to sound too dramatic, but this technology can solve a lot of the global hunger problems. That's exactly the idea, to have the food available, accessible, and simple. From the dawn of humanity, mankind has relied on the land for its sustenance. We cultivated fields just like this barley field to feed a growing population. But as the population grew, our draw on the land grew, and today more than ever, we need to innovate and come up with new solutions to solve tomorrow's problems. Around the world, companies and governments are racing to create these solutions, and at the forefront of that race are Israeli companies and innovators. There is a huge innovation in Israel, in the biotech industry, and also in the agriculture industry. And Israel is a leader in this technology. We're trying to look into the next step in the evolution of the food industry, because we have to really consider how to optimize our use of natural resources so that we don't overconsume our planet. Bringing the power of nature to the people through a very, very unique process that ensures optimal efficacy for the human body. We're on our way to northern Israel to meet with Uri Lesmes, who's an associate professor at the Technion in the Faculty of Biotech and Food Sciences. Uri and his team are working on some incredible developments that affect aspects of our everyday life. Hey, Uri. Welcome. Thank you for having us, Professor. Pleasure to have you. So, first of all, welcome to the Technia. Let's start off with a broad definition of science and technology. Science is understanding what's around us. Mm -hmm. And technology is about harnessing this knowledge to manipulate the, our environment. You have biotech, which applies biological knowledge into manipulations and technologies that we can harness for mankind benefit. Agritech mm -hmm. can manipulate anything in the agricultural field. And food tech involves any sort of intervention to manipulate the stages of food from their initial stage all the way down to the consumers. Food technology has always been a matter of man's survival and goes way back to the beginning of time. Bear in mind the human species is the only one that cooks their food. I asked Uli, to take me through the history of how we got here to this place and lifestyle. We harnessed fire to transform natural resources, food, meat, pulses, whatever, to something that provides us better calories, better nutrition. So our body was free, not just to survive, but to do other things. And that's where you see the big leap in the human brain. Let's go back to current times. So the 21st century gave us mass production of food that is tasty, safe, affordable, and convenient. Mm -hmm. But then people became more obese, diabetes was on the rise, IBD, Crohn, colitis. And then late 1990s, early 2000s, people started to look for healthier food options. And then food and health became a big issue. The market started to demand better foods. And then we come to the next phase, which is where you sit today. In that sense, we're trying to look into the next step yeah. in the evolution of the food industry and the intersection between humans and their food. We need to accept the fact that from birth to death, our bodies change, our needs change. So throughout life, we need to tailor what we eat to our needs. And this is where science comes into play. For example, when you look at infant formula, you, there are stages. Stage one for newborns, stage two for six months old babies, and for toddlers you have stage three, for example. But after stage three, foods becomes one size fits all. Take whatever you want, whenever you want it. But we change, and the food industry has yet to offer tailored solutions. For example, why is the same apple giving the same person, but at different life stages, different benefits. So we're trying to take those concepts and actually make them intersect with food engineering. Uri and his faculty are trying to achieve something that will be a complete game changer. You created these bioreactors that are essentially stomachs, intestines that are in a lab. And it's like, so this is for an elderly person, this is for a young person, this is for male, female, you know, etc. And then feed them 
and see how things break down in them. And then the, the, the output of that information is, is this group in society needs this different kind of food? Is that the right way to describe it? Yeah, we're trying to build a toolbox of mm -hmm. knowledge that can then be translated by industry, by manufacturers, to manipulations that they can do either in how they process the food or how they formulate food. We're trying to find all the rules of nature that then we can try to manipulate better to different individuals. I think you raise a point that is, is counterintuitive to many people, in which most people think, myself included, if I need 10 grams of protein or whatever, I consume 10 grams and I, my body absorbs 10 grams. If only nature was that simple, I'd be out of a job. <laughs> you would? <laughs> yeah, it's because it's not just about the 10 grams per day, but it's also the source, because you don't consume a pure ingredient. Yeah. One day you can have an egg, another day you can have a piece of salmon, another day you can have something that looks like a meatball or a burger that's made from worms, that ma made from oh, crickets. Hold on. Made from worms? Yes. Really? Yeah. Humans are obliged to scour nature for protein sources so that we can exhaust nature's uh, diversity to give us protein. Insects produce protein at much better yields. To get one kilogram of protein out of a cow, I would have to feed it with 20 kilograms of feed. So we're talking about a one to 20 conversion factor. For insects, it's almost one to one. That's one thing. The second thing is they grow much faster. A cow takes four or five years to grow for us to enjoy a steak. Insects takes weeks. It doesn't make sense to ignore their potential as a source, but the problem is there. A lot of people in the Western world think of, of insects as something dirty, but if they are grown in reactors, they will be very, very clean. And if we then make them into porridge, ice cream, into yogurt, into bread, into snacks, so why not explore that avenue? Have you explored that? Yeah. We even produced in our lab ice cream that is fortified with warm protein. Lucky for us, it was simply tasty. And it was more nutritious than a normal ice cream. The problem is in our faces. The world is not growing, and we need to find new solutions to solve our problems. And not just follow the rules, because the rules always bring you to a certain point. And even Einstein was a very wise man, and he said, if you keep doing the same, don't expect to get different results. This is exactly the counterintuition of Israelis. We are always trying to find a different way to get to the same point or to a better point. <laughs> We're trying to reinvent. Welcome back. Mati, it's very interesting to see when we think about the land of Israel, mm -hmm. a land of milk and honey. In the next 20 years or 30 years, there won't be enough milk and there won't be enough honey. Yeah. And food tech might be vital. Well, that's what's incredible. You might be eating a substitute to the milk and a substitute to the honey that we never thought was possible before. Mm -hmm. And it's easier to obtain, and it's going to be easier on your body to digest, and it's going to be easier to scale up and feed people that, that don't have the right kind of food today. Israel brings a solution not just for Israel, yeah. for the rest of the world. When you think about India, you think about the growth of population in the next 20, 30 years. And, and we're seeing that. I mean, we're seeing the technologies that are developed here in small scale being sort of rolled out in other countries in a much larger scale. And you could almost say we have an inverse blessing here, where the land is so harsh and the environment is so challenging that it forced us to come up with really creative ideas. And we're able to bless others mm -hmm. with those same creative solutions. Beautiful. And that's really the story of this Beautiful. land. An incredible story of hope and blessing comes out of this place to the world. So let's continue watching some of those solutions. The Bible tightly ties the concept of blessing and fruitfulness of the land. If you're in Israel and you're following God's plan, the land will bear much fruit. And if you're not, well, it doesn't. Thousands of years later, after these scriptures were originally written, we're back in the same place. Just this time, it's not just the fruit of the land. It's fruit paired with technology, with innovation and knowledge. We've become a nation that exports knowledge in the biotech, in the agrotech, in the food tech industries, and spreads them around the world. We're heading towards Rehovot in central Israel to meet a super interesting company called BioHarvest Sciences. And from what we've heard, they're working on some of the most cutting edge technology with things that have to do with food supplements. Ilan, 
Hey, Monty. Hey, good to see you. Welcome to Bioharvest Sciences. Thank you, thank you. Bioharvest Sciences, at our core, we are a biotech company that's focused on health and wellness. When God gave us the beautiful earth and he filled us with literally millions of different species of plants, there was a reason. These plants carry essential active ingredients for the human body. And we have a proprietary platform technology that allows us to take any active ingredient from the plant and we're able to grow that active ingredient in a cell for people to consume mm -hmm. in order to improve their overall health and wellness. BioHarvest flagship product Vinia is a health supplement created from grape extract. Vinia is based on the French paradox. French people, they have a very fatty diet, but they have generally very good cardiovascular health. The scientists looked at it and they realized, wow, it's for moderate consumption of red wine. That's two to three glasses of red wine every single day. They realized it was from a combination mm -hmm. of polyphenols that live inside the actual red grape. Breaking down the science behind a certain diet's health benefits is one thing, but BioHarvest is taking that to the next level. So with our technology from the skin of the red grape, we started to grow those specific polyphenols in a cell mm -hmm. over 21 days in bioreactors. Literally, we're feeding the cells almost like you would feed in a vineyard, except we're growing them in bioreactors and we're feeding these beautiful cells. And once they reach the body mass, we do what actually happens in real life with wine. We harvest the cells and as a result, we have a very, very active powder which is able to significantly increase blood flow in the body. The ability to increase blood flow from a supplement alone sounds incredible. I met with Malkit Azahi, who has been leading Vinya's clinical trials to explain to me exactly what that means. So, first of all, we perform four clinical trials mm -hmm. in high blood pressure, mm -hmm. also in doing uh, sports. We saw that their sugar levels reduces and they felt better. When we are talking on blood flow, we are talking on all the body, on the brain, on the legs, on eyes, everything controlled by our blood flow. It means that when you improve the blood flow, you improve your quality of life. You live better, you think more clearly, you are more awake. In this room over here, we have our bioreactors where we're actually growing I our noticed, red grape cells. I are hidden. They are behind closed curtains, obviously mm -hmm. given the sensitivity of our technology. The team are actually in the final stages of a harvest. So when the cells mm -hmm. have reached a specific uh, body map, literally we take the cells out of the bioreactors, we then take them through a drying process. It then is encapsulated in those little capsules that we then provide to the consumer. And I mean, I'm looking at it, it looks like the real thing. So it's like lab-grown nature. Shalom. Shalom. Nice to meet you. Dr. Yochi Chagai is the co-founder and chief scientist at Vinia, and she is the mother of this technology. If we could compare it to the adult technology that are in the market, mm -hmm. there are two main uh, technology to extract the active ingredients from plants, mm -hmm. or you can synthesize it as a synthetic product. Mm -hmm. Both of them, the conformation of these components is changed. Mm -hmm. And in our process, we keep this a natural structure, mm -hmm. which is optimal for human and also for plants. Until we, we started to develop this technology, nobody succeeded to do it because it's very complex to grow plant cells in liquid media because it's not natural for them. And we are the first in the world. We are going to change the world. In this way, people can consume our product to prevent disease. This is the idea, to prevent disease in the world. Ultimately, we're doing God's work in the modern world. And we're the bridge to bring the power of the plants that God created. And we're bringing it to consumers in a way that their bodies are able to dissolve and produce the right kind of positive health and wellness outcomes for the consumer. It's impressive to see 
Israeli scientists and innovators taking God's gifts of nature to a whole new level of healing. Israel is a small state. It doesn't have a lot of natural resources. Rather, we have our best resources, and that is the human mind. One person can generate creativity, that's fine. But when a lot of people stimulate each other, that's where really cool things are born. It's a real privilege from the Almighty that I can have responsibility making a fundamental difference to the overall health and wellness of the world. Hey, I'm Mati Shoshani, and thank you for watching the TBN Israel YouTube channel. We hope this video gave you greater understanding of Israel and her people. If you haven't already, subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you never miss a video. We'd love to hear from you, so be sure to share what you've learned and ask your questions and comments below. And invite your friends to join the conversation.